Here is the first mission that has been selected to understand what our exoplanet is made of. Um, what is the temperature, what is the nature. And for the first time, we'll have the opportunity to investigate 1,000 exoplanets and understand their nature and their composition. So an exoplanet is a planet that's orbiting around a star that's not our sun. So this is planets that are out there in the universe around every star that you can see in the sky. We know already that there are probably more planets than there are stars in the universe, but there are so many stars out there, both in our own galaxy and every other galaxy out there, that we expect that there are more planets in the universe than there are grains of sand on the whole planet Earth. Ariel will observe the light um, from 1,000 exoplanets and the way we'll do that is uh, selecting planets which are transiting and while the planet is transiting in front of the star we will look at the stellar light that is filtered through the atmosphere of the planet and we will split the light into colours or wavelengths and every molecule has a unique signature and we will use basically these properties of molecules to find out where we're in the, plan, on, in the atmosphere of the planet, uh, there is some water vapour or some CO2 or some carbon monoxide um, and we'll have a full picture of what's going on in those atmospheres. The molecules that we're targeting um, are really interesting because they tell us a lot about the formation history of the exoplanets and ultimately things like methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide and water are the types of molecules that ultimately we'll be targeting to start looking for habitable zone exoplanets in future missions. So there have been lots of missions looking for exoplanets, um, TESS, Kepler, even Hubble has found exoplanets, but I think we could say that all previous missions were stamp collecting, how many planets are there out there, whereas this is the first one that's really looking at the character of exoplanets and what their atmospheres really contain. So Ariel is going to go out to the L2 Lagrange point. Um, it's a point that's one and a half million kilometres away from the Earth in the direction opposite the Sun. You can see Ariel over here at the L2 point. Ariel is a very large payload for a scientific mission. We have the large mirror and we have V-groove radiators that slot around the edge of the telescope, which has a long baffle to keep any light out that we don't want to be observing. The detectors need to be at 35 to 40 Kelvin to operate, and that means it needs an active cooling system and that's what we're building here. It's kind of similar to your fridge at home. Um, it works by expanding gas through a small nozzle. So it's a little bit like if you want to blow on your hands to warm them up, you open your mouth and the hot air comes out. Um, if you purse your lips, the air coming out is cooler. Every spacecraft has to go through thermal vacuum testing. This is a thermal vacuum chamber of five metre diameter, which is a very large one for the UK. Ariel will be put inside this inside a special cryo facility. This chamber can go down to 80 Kelvin and up to 400 Kelvin to simulate the space environment of being heated by the sun or cooled by space. Our system needs to go down to 20 Kelvin, so we're going to insert extra facility in here, which is cooled with liquid helium to get it down cold enough. Ariel is currently planned for launch in 2028. Um, we're just going through the end of what's called the definition phase at this point and we're about to go through the system requirements review and mission adoption review where we prove that the um, mission is ready to go and that we understand what it is that we're going to build. But of course, although we are doing a lot of modelling about what we will expect to see, I'm sure that the mission will reveal a lot of unexpected surprises and I'm really looking forward for those unexpected surprises.